Hey everyone, and welcome to the next edition of the Snapchat. Today, I'm joined by none other than Cozy Snap. Cozy, what is a variant that's so ugly that you can't help but love it? Uh, um, you know, that's a, <laughs> dude, that's such a good question. I actually have one in mind. I actually have a good answer for you because it just got adjusted, and I have a really cool variant for it. But I, I pick the uglier one typically. So Shadow King, right? Great card. Look at this beautiful variant here. It's a nice There's variant. something about this guy <laughs> right here. <laughs> There's something about this, and for those that are on audio, it is a Pixel Shadow King, and he just, he looks like he's dripping. Look, he's got the fist, those spectacles, you know, that you know that pulls whatever he's trying to pull. There's two things that get me about this variant that just blow my mind. First of all, it, it, his hat is almost like Yondu's helmet thingy, and then the stupid smiley face in the background. What the hell is that? Like, you notice those blue eyes? Like, what is that? It's supposed to be like the, the sh look at, look at, it's, it's all of his, right? You got this terrifying terrifying creature but then on his the shadow it's like this it's this little like hello and dude his hat i swear is straight out of aladdin like straight up it's so him and aladdin are best friends and it looks like he either has a cane and or uh a rifle i can't tell if that's like a gun and or just looks like a <laughs> dude so bad i love him and like if you can win with this card it's the ultimate <laughs> slap across the face i can't wait for the comment that's like thanks guys that's what i got with my free variant you ass hats like yeah, i dude. can't wait for it no you should feel you oh, should feel God. lucky to get this beautiful he's like smuggling two cookies in his cheeks god i love him and, and it's I also, so, yeah he has like hamster cheeks right now that's so good cozy i mean that, that what a great start man I, okay we're gonna be talking about underrated card combos here deck design 101 and the most hated cards in marvel snap cozy what did we talk about on your side of the channel oh uh, man we talked about the developers q a we talked about questions that haven't been answered to the public but they have been out there and answered by developers really good stuff there our favorite cards this season one of our favorite topics we picked a favorite card in each cost and gave uh, our reasoning why behind them. And weekly card buffs are coming. We talked about what we thought would be the predicted cards that would actually get the small number adjustments, bud. Fun one overall. Super excited for next week. This feels like the last calm week before the storm. Yeah, and it's actually worth noting that next week uh, in the pin, we're going to have a pin comment. We're going to be taking suggestions for what day you guys would be most interested in us moving the Snapchat to in order to facilitate a discussion about the over the air updates and whatnot. So keep an eye out for that down below so we can get your feedback so Cozy and I can obviously deliver the content that you're looking for. With that being said, Cozy, let's get started. We're going to talk about the underrated card combos of Marvel Snap. Now, this is something that I really want to talk about for some time because I feel like with new cards are coming out we get so caught up and some of these like new fancy pants combos but sometimes it's the old tried tested and true combos that just people are so forgotten about that like it takes people by surprise so i want to bring up some of these underrated classic combos that might be able to give some players even in pool one two and early pool three a chance to kind of even up the odds a little bit so cozy why don't you get us started you know if you're talking about tried and true one that i've been going back to a little bit more and, and in general just i play a lot of control at times uh it, it's gonna be rescue now rescue's in a weird spot because of shang chi being so popular at the moment but what goes well with rescue i think a couple of cars but one to protect rescue is the tried and true just solid combo of professor x on top of rescue you're getting 14 power into uh well depending on what you have in the lane actually you're only getting 12 power but uh, i just had a game up where i had 14 power you're getting 12 power on the rescue lane which is great you're locking it down you know if they didn't commit anything to that lane there's not a lot of things that can top that to seal it up on that turn five and then maybe you focus on one other lane for that victory or maybe you've controlled it with storm there's a lot of ways to get a lot of value out of rescue and professor x together i love that combo i love rescue professor x and uh, i don't think anyone really expects it like they see rescue and i don't think they calculate professor x in their head like i just don't think that's a combo that people see very often and uh it's actually worth noting that another fantastic combo with rescue while we're there is uh, captain marvel because uh mm -hmm. it doesn't do quite what professor x does but one of the disadvantages of rescue in theory is that you have this card and now you've really committed to a specific lane on four and five, right? But Captain Marvel addresses that by giving you the mobility of Captain Marvel itself. So I love the pick of rescue. I feel like rescue, if, <laughs> would it be a buff if rescue was a four, eight? Like, think about it. Like, is the four, nine is what detrimental, like, to rescue's viability? Yeah, you know, probably it would it would be bad because I think there's easier ways to get the stat line. But I know what you mean. Like, yeah, the Shang-Chi yeah, Shang thing is just so common at this point. Um, it's funny, like you're rolling off that with your Captain uh, Marvel 
uh, into Rescue. And, and another one into Professor X is Negasonic. It's not a card a lot of people have at the moment, but a tried and true combo that I've been playing, guys, is Negasonic. And then I follow that up with Professor X. Every single time, it stops. She actually blows up, but then she doesn't die. It's a very interesting interaction that happens. But uh, it's another great one. I always focus on ways to um, help Professor X if I didn't get Daredevil down. And both of those are pretty easy answers. And usually you play that with Storm, which means a lot of control happening. I love that, Cozy. I mean, you've always been a huge fan of control. So hearing you talk about using control cards in very unique ways is actually super uh, enlightening to me. Uh, now, I'm going to take a card that like we've all played a ton of. But we move away from, as we exit pool two and get into pool three and that's nightcrawler there's two specific combos i want to talk about with nightcrawler that i think one of which is a little more obvious and i want to bring up for the purposes of the hit monkey meta and potentially the kitty pride meta coming but i think that nightcrawler into something like angela is extremely valuable because obviously you get that proc on the angela and then you get to move the nightcrawler then you can play more value onto angela bring it back with beast bring it back with falcon play the nightcrawler back onto angela and repeat ad nauseum so i do think that nightcrawler angela is a fantastic combo that i think some people might be sleeping on but there's a little bit of a more fancy one okay a little bit of a more fancy one and that is nightcrawler and Hulk Buster that I do not see very often, but when you give a buff to a Nightcrawler like that, that is a moving card that is now worth quite a bit, Cozy. Yeah, I like that, man, because you can't Hulk Buster Vision because of the cost value, but you are then having a 1-6, a right? I mean, my head, that funny enough, when Jeff got announced, I was thinking Hulk Buster with Jeff. I'm like, oh my God, it's like, you know, you could put uh, the Hulk Buster on a card that can go anywhere, and it's the same rings true for Nightcrawler. Awesome uh, addition. I think Hulkbuster in general, Alex, now that you bring the card up, is just one that is often, I mean, like, never played. Uh, but we talked about it. We I don't have it today. I could echo it. But Hulkbuster and Taskmaster is still such a reliable combo for those that don't have Sherry. You get the power of what you pumped out. It makes so much sense. It's a great combo in that. I like Hulkbuster as just a sneaky pick that people aren't playing in general. Yeah, Hulkbuster is a slept on card. And like, especially when you're getting a lot of these deck lists that are utilizing so much space on the board, it's pretty fascinating what Hulkbuster can do. You add a lot of value to the board state, but you also don't take up much real estate, which could be valuable in many circumstances, Cozy. Yeah, and you talked about balance. And, I, and I'll throw in one more kind of combo with Professor X yet again and Kitty Pride that you threw in there. When you're bouncing back Kitty Pride, and making her zero she doesn't grow in power but she is down to zero cost now it's a it, it, that's the free play which is fantastic right the same goes for things like demon you can't quinjet it but if you bounce back a demon or you bounce back a titania playing a zero titania a zero demon or kitty into a professor x lane is the same thing you have a titania into a professor x and it's free is I haven't seen it enough, and it's something I plan to do in tournaments. Definitely, you reminded me of it. It's another control factor and something that definitely can work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of what they talked about with the Quinjet nerf. Like, a free one-drop is a very impactful card, and we got to be very cognizant of that and how, like, it can be used to combo in ways that might be feel, feel a little oppressive, and I think you just gave a great example. Cozy, can I hit you with a classic combo that I guarantee no one's expecting right now? Hit me. All right, I want to talk about Wolfsbane and odin now i know this sounds crazy okay but hear me out when you play down wolfsbane right you're getting decent value honestly you're getting decent value if, if wolfsbane if she's the third card in a location if you follow that up if it's like ironheart wolfsbane and then you follow that up with something like odin not only does the uh the ironheart reproc but you have Wolfsbane reproc as well with consideration of the Odin being there as well. So like you get this massive jump in power from Wolfsbane and suddenly you probably have one of the biggest statted three cost cards in Marvel Snap. Dude, I, I, I like that Wolfsbane is coming back. I like, and it's been, again, we're in this kind of flood zoo meta like we just talked about. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of ways to utilize that and a lot of ways to make it just absolutely crazy. Wolfsbane in general just feels like a very good card that is... We've talked about it on this episode even just long and forgotten because it was in the early days and you're like, oh, it was nice back when I could. Uh, but it's solid, man. Super solid. It is. It's one of those cards that generally speaking, like people don't play enough and uh, it doesn't quite fit the role in Silver Surfer, but like it really should. Like you could definitely close like a Sarah Silver Surfer lane like you brood in Wolfsbane. Like who competes with that lane? You know oh. what I mean? It's wild what it can do. But like 
it's a good card. Yeah, I love that you brought up Surfer because that does lead into, into my next card. And it's kind of just Absorbing Man combined with a lot of cards that we just forget about his utility. Uh, Brood and Absorbing Man is still crazy. It's still absolutely crazy. You get multiple of these Broods coming out and it's all going to co cost uh, the, the same and can get affected by Silver Surfer. Uh, but dude, and like Wolf Spain and, and Absorbing Man is a bit awkward. Like you don't, it's not the greatest. But I will say Debris and Absorbing Man is insane. Like legit, if you have a good one turn and a good two, and then you're set up for turns five and six, and you have clogged up either all of a location and now you have to play around it. You got to figure out some ways. Like you got to have a couple blue marvels. You have a couple Patriots in the deck to get something out of it. Uh, but dude, it's sick. I mean, you talk about if you're a fan of junk and clog, like that is one of the best, most oppressive combos. I love it. And it's one of those things that like, I don't think people really pay attention to. Like when you're taking up multiple slots in an opponent's board state, like that is so oppressive. It's very difficult, especially when their deck is not designed to deal with it. Like they, if they don't have Deathlock, if they don't have Carnage, if they don't have Patriot or whatever, like you mentioned, like what do they do? Like you're just taking up all this space. I love that, and uh, I actually have another combo, and I don't actually suggest anyone do this, but pay attention to my shorts feed, because you're going to see a play that I made where I played, <laughs> I was playing a disruption list, I did the whole Viper kicking over, you know, uh, the hood into negative zone, which you thought would have been awesome, right? They had to play their card there already, I kicked over the, uh, the hood, and I decided, you know what, I'm going with something crazy. I played Green Goblin, turn three, turn four. Absorbing man, the green goblin, he hops over into the negative zone, blocks off the location, and my opponent did not know what to do other than retreat. It was a beautiful moment. And, uh, you know, I think Absorbing Man is one of those cards that, like, really has fascinating combo potentials if you just want to be a little creative. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. We can relabel this uh, crazy things I pulled off uh, with Absorbing Man because there are some weird uh, interactions and just crazy, like, on reveal effects that you can repeat twice. So, very. Uh, very definitely a, a fun one there, but I would say the last one that I have, uh, at least for myself, that I think is just overlooked is still in the bounce faction here a bit, and uh, that's going to be with bounce and move. Now, it still feels a bit on the clunky side, but I have to say, kicking back an Iron Fist to your hand and being able to use that for free and then playing Iron Fist with dagger, it just feels really good, and you're getting a lot, a lot of power for not a lot of a commitment, Alex. And so I would say that that is one to keep your eyes on. Uh, you can make a move balance kind of deck. It does okay. It's not all the way there, but the fact that you can get yourself a 210 on the last turn of the game for one energy, it's kind of crazy. You have to have the board space too, but a 210 for one energy. Yeah, it's pretty wild. And I mean, Dagger was recently buffed. I love the Super Saiyan variant of it as well. Um, I mean, I love the idea of using move in interesting shells. Um, I mean, uh, I've, I've experimented with Heimdall and Rampless. I've experimented with, um, you know, uh, uh, Doctor Strange and lists where people had no idea there was even move at all in there. I've even played Iron Fist in Cerebro 3 to knock over multiple men in Cerebro 3, which is pretty wild. They even had bats for the the Iron Fist. So there's like so many unique ways you can just utilize and splash move in. So I really like where your head's at there. And uh, with that being said, I'm going to close out this topic with what I think is a really underutilized combo. And I'm ironing out a brand new deck for this, okay? Brand new deck. I think it's going to be pretty interesting. I'm working on the details. But Adam Warlock and Guardians of the Galaxy. This is a combination that I feel like people don't often pay attention to. Adam Warlock is a magnet for counterplay. Because when that, listen, you don't want your opponent just drawing cards nonstop. If you can play a nice statted one drop and then you play Adam Warlock on top, you know what's coming turn three? If you drop Groot and then Drax on four, they might be chasing that Warlock and you might set up a pretty powerful lane with an intense amount of tempo while drawing cards getting ready for your plays in the other lanes. I think Adam Warlock in the Guardians of the Galaxy might have some serious untapped potential. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I had Storm and the Guardians on there and uh, it's the same kind of premise. I think I know next month is going to be Guardians month. We have uh, Nebula coming out and she's a card where like the opponent has to play there or she gets more powerful. I think we're going to see a lot of kind of craziness come out of that. And uh, I'm, I'm just I'm happy to see more Adam Warlock play in general, man. Like the, to force your opponent. It's like Lizard, how like you kind of force them now to play in that lane to to get that Lizard down. Adam is the same. You, you are disrupting them in a, in a little bit of a way to to force them to stop the card draw because one draw alone 
from Adam Warlock makes it worth it. Absolutely. Like, even just, you said it, one draw is enough. And is this like a quota of, we've brought up Adam Warlock every week for like the last month, I think. We've been really on the vast Adam Warlock way, uh, bandwagon. I mean, Adam Warlock is seeing some resurgence here, but still, like, I don't see people playing him against me. No. I experiment with him, but people aren't playing him against me. I think there's some uh, missed opportunities there. Yeah, it's a card that will never get touched uh, because I think it's exactly where it needs to be. And I, I definitely think it can be played more. I think people are... Uh, nervous to play it. It's a bit of a nerve-wracking card, right? Like, you, you, you got to make sure that you build a deck around it. We can talk about that on deck design. You need to make sure you build a deck around it in the right ways and complement it if you do decide to play Adam. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's a great transition to our deck design 101 topic where, I mean, Cozy, I'll be honest with you, one of the inspirations for this is deck design is by far one of my favorite elements of the game. Um, if you told me that I could not design new decks for Marvel Snap, then I wouldn't want to be a content creator. It's like, it's what really inspires me to be a content creator. I love the deck design process. We bounce decks off each other all week. And um, one of the reasons why I want to have this conversation with you is because I think you have some of the best decks in the business. The thing I really like about your decks are that you offer and take cards that people are sleeping on and you kind of you bring new life to them and you create this surprise factor in combinations that people might not be expecting and so i want to kind of dig into like how we design decks what our process looks like because i think that one of the things we've talked about in the past before is that like sometimes the best deck out there is not whatever's on a meta report but whatever you invent you learn how to play. You design wholly, and your opponents don't expect. So I think a conversation about designing a deck is important. Well, I appreciate you just saying that. It means a lot, man. Uh, I, I definitely, I, I know that when I put a deck out there, it's going to get tested, and I want to make sure that I get people good decks. So I do put a lot of care into, you know, what I'm doing. At the, I'm never trying to be the best. I just like to have fun, right? At the end of the day, you know, I played, uh, I always love asking people when I meet them, Alex. Uh, what is your most influential video game in your life, right? Like, what really, like, gave you the love for video games? And I don't know if it's, like, the most, but I would say Pokemon Red and Blue is way up there for me. It meant a lot for my childhood. And from those early days, all the way up to the last game that I was consecrating for, abilities and synergy with abilities is something I've always loved. I've always been obsessed with it. I've always looked at, uh, you know, I did, like, competitive Pokemon at a point, and I would look at, okay, does this move complement this move on this other team? Whatever, right? And I feel like a lot of that is the same in Marvel Snap, and it's where I start. Everybody has their own method to their madness, right? But for me, I always want there to be core synergy in the deck that isn't reliant on perfect card draw. So you have uh, multiple factors that work together. And uh, it is interesting because I've even gotten better at this over time. You can't try to do too much in one deck, right? You have to just try to get one or two kind of things captured. Uh, and, and that's usually where I start with with uh, with my deck creation. I, it's funny because I often start in a similar way. I often take a look at, okay, what is a card that I feel like is underutilized, underplayed, can provide surprise factor, but also has a good stat line or has a good impact on the board state? And how can I create a package that really maximizes not only the impact of that card, but the consistency? And that's what I often look at in my deck design. I like consistency. I like the idea, and that's maybe why I'm an absolute Chavez enjoyer, because I love the consistency that Chavez provides, and it's like a safety blanket. And I try to move away from that, you know, add a little bit Magneto in there, but I do think that, like, from a deck design standpoint, I say, okay, what is something that can surprise someone on the ladder? What is something that someone's not expecting to see? How can I circumvent their expectations to take their cubes away? And that's often where I start. You know, it's funny too. And it's not even about cars in the deck. It's about the thought process behind it, right? Like a, a few weeks back, like I still, it's crazy to me. The most attributed deck that people say they got them to infinite was the surprise Patriot deck. And it was really nothing new under the sun. It was just a new idea of playing the Patriot deck. It was a new way of playing it, right? Invisible Woman, uh, Ultron. It's been there since beta, but how do you not give away the keys to the castle? How do you kind of sneak in different things and say, hey guys, I'm playing a Shuri deck. You saw that zero, you saw that lizard. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's an invisible woman. What's that doing there? And then you Ultron it, right? So uh, to me, a lot of what I try to do too is not only look at the cards, but look at how is the deck going to play? Uh, I do these turn by turns for my deck guide and they're very important to me because you need to know exactly what is the most optimal thing to do what is the next and what is the third, right? And then what is your snap conditions? And you build that all together to make a deck blend uh, and more importantly, make it easy for other people to use as well. Yeah, and one thing that's worth considering as well is like, and this is where I think Marvel Snap can improve, is that often when I'm designing a deck, there feels like 
some slots that you can't really play with too much. Like, I feel like before the Sunspot nerf, if you weren't playing Sunspot or Iceman, if you didn't have immense synergy with one of the other ones, you weren't allowed to play any other card, right? Lizard kind of feels like that sometimes. Like, when do you play a Koye over Lizard? Like, it almost feels like you never play a Koye over Lizard. So I, I think we have some room to improve there. Like, for instance, like Punisher, we talked about it just prior, right? Like, when are you ever going to play Punisher? When you can play Captain Marvel, not Captain Marvel, Captain America, or Mr. Fantastic. Like, I think yeah. we need to improve the design space, and I think that's getting better over time. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. You want to have a surprise element. You don't want to get too far carried away. Don't be the guy that tries to make Punisher work, right? Like, there's a reason why he's, like, vastly, vastly, vastly underplayed, right? So, there are things that you need to stay away from in that department, per se, but I agree, and I think that's the hope of the devs, too. Like, they want to make, what do they say? They want a purpose for every card. I think that was a good way to put it. Um... So yeah, you know, I start with ability. Obviously, curve, man. Um, curve is such a tricky thing. Uh, I think it's super important. But at the same time, it's less important in a game like Snap. You know, how do you approach curve? So I tend to be someone who likes to play on curve. I like playing turn one, two, three, four, and five. I don't like skipping turn one. Uh, sometimes I feel like it's necessary. I will not add a Quicksilver to my deck. But I do feel like having a decent curve is important. Um, one thing that I really like about Marvel Snap is there's some like deck design elements where like if I find that people are often skipping turn one which is very common I feel like scorpion rises in relevance because if you're holding more cards in your hand scorpion is achieving more value so in like when we had the Mr. Negative meta of beta where like people were just playing negative after negative deck like I was playing tons and tons of scorpion and dominating with it because of the ability to impact very large hands that people were holding because they were skipping turn one and two if they didn't have Psylocke so I think that like some metas allow other cards to rise up and I think when you're designing a deck understanding the full meta and what's happening around you is important because it allows you to add the appropriate tech cards add the appropriate counters add the appropriate answers to what's in the meta yeah for sure great point there uh, i would say that the you know if you could be the first on the scene to in a new meta with some new cards that kind of affect that then you're going to get an advantage over others uh the other thing that i really take into account uh is the style of deck that you're playing alex right so a majority of the time i love priority it always feels good to have priority and snap especially being able to control that and so uh, that's why Lizard is so commonly played. That's why Sunspot is commonly played. Uh, that's why Sunspot's nerf hurt them a little bit because you do give up a little bit of priority. Uh, so, But if you're doing a priority deck, make sure you complement said deck with other cards. You know, people write off Arrow all the way, but, you know, probably not much of a better card to have with priority or Negasonic, one of the best ones to have. So it's one of those things that you want to identify the deck you're playing. You know, all the time I see people like, Overcommit to this like massive amount of power when in reality most game states you're going to be ahead by so much and you have a little bit of control here a little bit of the tech card here you don't need to try to pull off some wombo combo and it's usually a culprit of like one card that doesn't need to be there right like i find myself love them to death but i find myself often with that being absorbing man right i'll have my deck and i'm like He's just kind of spicy into it. it. Does he need to be in there? I don't know. But how cool would it be if I got a wave Dr. Doom and I Dr. Doomed again with Absorbing Man, right? Like, that is where, like, the craziness, I need to, like, pump back a little bit. Uh, but I, I do see people trying to do too much with their decks, if that makes sense. It does make perfect sense. And I think you, you're you right to identify Absorbing Man. Like, there are so many decks where, like, do you have Absorbing Man or do you just run something like White Queen? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's it's a difficult choice to make. That's three power, additional scouting, a potential turn six play if you don't draw your cards. Like, there's so much happening there. Right. And um, you're 100% right. And all these considerations, they they really go and come into play when you consider that it's a 12-card deck. And every single card in a 12-card deck has to play a role. And if it doesn't, then it has to go. Like, you have to be able to rely on every card you draw to have an impact on the game board, the game state, or give you something that makes you get ahead. It, every card's important, Cozy. Exactly. And that's where it's like, I see people put Jubilee in it. Jubilee's a fun card. But you need to make sure that there's value there, right? Like, so recently I did a Sandman deck that's absolutely crazy, absolutely bonkers. And the deck, I saw people playing it with Scorpion. And, 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 and uh, let's say something like, I don't know, a sunspot, which is fine. That is fine. But at the end of the day, why not throw the Ebony Maw there, right? Because at the worst case scenario, Jubilee pulls your one cost card, which is the worst case scenario. At least it's going to be a one seven and you have cards to play into that Ebony, right? So there's just so many things you want to look at. And I think it starts with the card synergy and then what you're trying to accomplish 
Uh, what is your main goal with said deck? At the end of the day, I hope that this discussion helps to encourage people to like design their own list, get creative, and show it like legitimately show us, tweet us like, hey, I designed this list based on your discussion on Snapchat. I got to infinite or I got to 70, which was my goal, right? Again, we talked months ago about setting appropriate goals. If your goal is to get that free variant, which I, for a lot of people is cozy. I got a lot of feedback. People want that free variant at 70. They don't care so much about infinite. They want that free variant. So 70 is often the goal for them. Make a creative list, design something. And you know what's crazy is you have fun. I feel like you start to engage with the game in a way that like it kind of meant to be engaged with. Like that collection track system starts to make more sense when you get a tool, you unlock Jubilee in pool two, you're like, oh hell yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Or you unlock Lockjaw early in pool three, you're like, all right, here we go. It's Jubilee Lockjaw time. Like we got some tools, we got some gameplay. I just think that um, there's so much that goes into kind of like designing a deck in Marvel Snap. And um, I just feel like as content creators, we get an opportunity to share our deck designs with the world. People playing the game sometimes rob themselves with the, the joy of designing their own deck, piloting their own deck, experiencing the success of designing a deck that legitimately works yep. for fear of losing rank, for fear of like not getting to infinite or whatever. So please, I implore you to try taking some of these principles we talked about today, create something inventive and at Cozy Snap and at Alexander Kocha so we can see what you made. Love it. And now we got to talk about what I've been looking forward to all week, Cozy, the most hated cards in Marvel Snap. Now, this is a fantastic topic, and I want you guys in the comments below to comment your top five most hated cards. I am legitimately interested in looking because uh, there are some cards here, Cozy, that just piss me off. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of overlap here. Um, and uh, I mean, is it sad to say that there's cards in a collectible card game that piss you off, Cozy? Shouldn't we just be having fun all the time? No way, because there's different play styles, and I think that's why certain people get mad at different cards, right? Or <laughs> people at different ranks get mad at I bet you it will dif you know, differ per rank, too, right? Like, Galactus doesn't piss me off. He's annoying at times, but he doesn't, like, drive me absolutely crazy, where I know people hate Galactus more than any card in the game. Or same goes for Sandman. I just... I'm not bothered by Sandman, but I get it. Oh my God, I get it, right? Like People hate Sandman. Yeah, People absolutely hate Sandman. He stops it. He stops everything what you're trying to do. So I love, love, love that uh, it's like anything in life, man. Music, you name it. People hate different things, right? So uh, of course it's expected and my hates are different than someone like yours. What is your first card that you just you hate, Alex? So I think a really good point of top topic here would be to talk about Galactus for a second. Like you bring up Galactus being a hated card. You kind of just alluded to it. What do you think it is about Galactus that is so hated? Like I, it's, it wasn't the card I was going to bring up originally, but you, you did bring it up. And I think you're 100% right. Galactus is a hated card. But let's take a second to talk about like what is actually hated about it. What about that play style is so frustrating? I don't have the quote, but even the dev team said that they don't want this to be anywhere near the top decks. They don't. But it's just not fun. It's polarizing. That's the term they use because you it erases everything that's been done, right? Like it's it's a it's and then the the opponent that's built the deck has a significant advantage because they're ready for the one location, right? And so um, he's a card that I think is so fun. They need to be so careful. I think the dev said it correctly. They said really that he needs to be not amongst the top decks, but definitely a good one. And uh, you know, I feel like he should be in line with like Mr. Negative, right? Like good cube gain, a lot of risk, obviously a lot of reward, but not too much. So, uh, you know, again, people just hate him because he, he does mess up a lot. He messes up a he whole does. lot. He does. He does absolutely. I think it's like kind of like it's uh, it's not engaging for the person that's getting Galactus, right? Like it, it's not a fun experience. Um, it does erase the entire progress of the game, and uh, it can be extremely frustrating and counterintuitive, especially when they've Doc Oct your entire hand into the other lane and getting ready for the turn five Galactus into null and you know just death, and you can't even do anything, right? Like I can see why it's frustrating. Uh, moving on though, let's get right out of the way. Can we just talk about the Iceman Scorpion combo? Because I know that like that's gonna be a hot one in the comments section. Let's put them together. Iceman Scorpion. Cozy, from one to ten, how much do you hate the Iceman Scorpion combo? You know what's funny is I don't mind Scorpion. I hate Iceman. What? I mean, obviously, yeah. Scorpion's like, Come he's on. annoying. He's annoying, but I can like game plan around it. I like, and again, we've oh, man, we've we've said this so many times, but like it just Iceman is just he sees something, man. He's something. It's he's, hit Sarah. He's always going to, yeah, he's always going to hit the card you don't want. He's always going to do something that just it massively throws off what you're trying to do. You know, even like a lizard, you're like two, five, easy, three, five, eh, the toilet. You know, like it's, it's, <laughs> he's nuts, man. He, he is, he is up there for me. Cards that I can't control. It's the same as like, it's the ice box, the location. 
I'm like, don't oh, do it, don't do it. Boom. So bad. Every time. Every time it goes after the, the, the one card that like I needed to play at the turn it needed to be played on. Uh, so Iceman, funny enough, was like, he's definitely in my personal top three most. Like, I'm on the other side, like, just damn you. <laughs> just damn you, Iceman. <laughs> and when someone opens with Iceman Scorpion, like how how personal do you take that? Dude, it's just like, yeah, like I was playing Elysium uh, match the other day, first location, and the first turn was Ice Fan Scorpion. I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> I'm done. It's over. Like, just go ahead. Should I just donate the cube now or wait a couple turns? Uh, yeah. That's funny. Totally. It's a lot. It's interesting to me to hear that you actually don't think the Scorpion's that bad of a problem because uh, I'm pretty sure you're a, a Luke Cage enjoyer who loves Scorpion. <laughs> he is. And he's a card I, you know, obviously put into a lot of decks for the priority play, too. So, like, I, I totally. Totally like a little, again, self-love. I'm like, yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he's, he maybe he's okay. He's definitely yeah. really good though. Yeah, so I'm going to hit you with another one that uh, this isn't necessarily the most hated card, but this is a tilting card. Card that like when you play, it's going to piss you off. It's always going to upset you 100% of the time. 100% of the time, it pisses you off every time. Okay, yes, I changed the quote because that's how annoying this card is. It's Blade. Tell me how often you play Blade and you're just so upset that Blade's in your deck. Like, seriously, Blade is such a piss-off card. Yeah, dude, no, here's the secret. It's like, it's, it, I haven't told tons of people about this. With Blade, you just don't play him. <laughs> I know, you play him on turn six, or you play him on time. I don't of play Blade. I just don't play Blade. I, no, I don't want to put myself can't. through that emotion. Nope. Not, no, you can't. Not worth it. Not worth it. I, I can't even say that I've experienced Blade hate in a long time because I actively avoid him. Yeah, Blade is literally asking for emotional damage on a near constant basis. Like, there's there's no deck that really confidently plays Blade unless, okay, the original Strong Guy list played Blade because you could discard a turn five and get the Chavez to play the Strong Guy yeah. with an empty hand. But, like, that's literally it. Other than, oh, but then you just won't draw him. Then you just won't draw him. And then, like, he's useless, right? But, like, the turn one Hella deck wave, like, Hella deck into Blade is just so classic tilting garbage. Like, it is such an unplayable card not because it's stat line not because of its effect but just because it hates you so much it hates the player that put it in its deck dude i'm starting to hate yondu a lot i feel like yondu like i'll use yondu i'm like go yondu and it's like you know it, it like kills their i don't know like sunspot on turn four squirrel girl. Uh, yeah what yeah. yeah squirrel yeah i'm like okay okay that's okay and then it, it, i see the yondu and it's like patriot i'm like first of all you know my entire game plan second of all there goes my winning condition right like Every time Yondu puts out his little Mary Poppins arrow, he, he screws me, dude. So he's he's up there on the list as well for, for my most. Yondu, hate. the thing I love about Yondu is every time it's like turn three, oh, it's Kamartage. Oh, it's Yondu. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, a double gone. Yondu is rough. <laughs> every single time. Every every Kamartage game, my opponent has Yondu and it's ready. Oh man, it's so bad. It, it is he he is one that like I just I Again, I think Conquest will be a good card because it tells you a lot of intel. Yeah, you don't need to know like what the opponent's doing the entire time, but it, it definitely gives you gives you a little bit of a of a heads up. Now, obviously, like Shuri is up there, but that one's being taken care of. What's your next? Yeah, one? Yeah, let's not talk about Shuri. <laughs> Poor Shuri. Like, there's so much to hate on Shuri. Yeah, yeah. What's your next card? My next one, honestly, and it's again, it's not so much hated, but more like tilting. It's just so upsetting to play sometimes. It's Mr. Negative. Now, this is a bit of a hot take because, like, for me, I hate playing Mr. Negative decks. I can't stand it, Cozy. Like, I just hate it because, like, if I'm playing Mr. Negative, I have Psylocke, Zabu in the deck. If I have either one in my hand, you know, score, uh, what's his name, Negative sitting at the bottom of the deck, just smiling, right? If I pull Negative, you know I don't have Psylocke or Zabu. There is never, a, and when I'm playing at someone with a Zabu deck, they play Zabu and like Negative comes out on three and they just spank me mercilessly for Every the next time. four turns. And then like for me, it's like this deck, this card doesn't exist in my deck. It yeah, just doesn't exist. I swear, yeah, I, dude, I am the cozy cube charity whenever I play negative. And every time <laughs> they even get negative off, I'm like, whatever, man. What are the, what are the odds they have Iron Man and Mystique? What are the odds? What are the odds? And then like every turn, I'm like, you know, and then of course they snap. I'm like, they're bluffing, you know? like I, Yeah, they're bluffing. Let's like, go eat. They can't do it. And, and then they pull it. Yeah, dude, I would say for the, Mr. Neg negative is a unique one because it's a self-hating card that I use that other people seem to get the benefit from. Yeah, for sure. I would agree there. That's a good, that's a good pull. I, I got to hear your next one because like, honestly, like Mr. Negative for me is giving me, it's giving me flashbacks right now. Like I need you to take my mind off it. Yeah, dude, I would say, so I, you know, I was looking between, this was the one that like, I didn't just like pull out a list for. I was like kind of looking between like cards. I'm just like, uh, I, I just, these, these bug the heck out of me. There's two more. I would say I really, for, I don't see it often. It just doesn't happen often, but the card is designed so that when it is played, 
it's like you lose good day sir and it's just so infuriating and it's rogue i never see rogue but when i see rogue come out it's like it's over it's over you lost the game's done the, yeah. the game is over and so like the reason i have a hate for rogue and i love actually using the card but i have a hate for rogue because i swear every single time uh you, you, you're just mad whenever it comes out so i would say rogue is probably near the top of top of my list uh for cards that make me just pissed off right away uh and i have one last one but i want to hear your last one okay my last one i think okay this is gonna take you by surprise because there's one card that finds a way to upset me every single time i put it in a deck it finds a way to donate cubes destroy my dreams it's a two cost card cozy the stat line is two three beautiful archer variant it is Scarlet Witch. Oh. Scarlet Witch is built to tilt, man. Like, it, even if, like, that location, that location change is going to just clap your cheeks every single time. It's like Ben Brode is personally watching the game and is like, uh -huh, you thought that location was bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> get ready. Get ready for what we got for you next. Like, yeah. every single damn time, the amount of emotional damage that Scarlet Witch has caused me is remarkable i i don't think i'll ever recover from it dude she she i've watched this this card win a million games and lose a million more like it is it is very crazy to see uh the locations and it's always just like you're always just like you you, you play her and then you're like like be kind <laughs> like don't you know like don't be negative zone on my four one cost on the one the, on the same thing uh i like it mine's am i last one is actually a two cost too so i love i thought you were gonna pick mine uh, oh. because Scarlet Witch it, it is is definitely uh, it can create some just wacky scenarios. I don't know about you, but when I play this card, I'm like, eh, maybe it kind of bothered them, you know. But when I get this card, I'm like, God, son of, there's the whole gameplay. It's Black Widow. When I play Black Widow, man, I'm oh, like, yeah. I'm like, all right, you know, take that Widow's bite, and they're like, you know, they find some way to like, you know, it's not that big of a deal, or they already have their winning combo piece. When I get Black Widow, I'm like, what do I do? It's over just that game's done call it call it quits man so this would probably be one of my most like just debilitating look at the evil on here too on the null variant uh just she's up there on my list probably probably uh, a top five this is one of those cards that honestly we talk about slept on cards all the time a black widow might be up there you're right getting that widow's bite feels so bad it feels so awful it takes up space on your board and what's crazy about it, my favorite combo with uh, with Black Widow is Viper and the Black Widow. Like, honestly, it's a vi it's a Viper target. It's a 2-1. Who cares about the one right. power? Send it on over, right? You already did like, what you now need. they're taking two spots on their board. It's it's a beautiful thing. You're right, man. That is so tilting. Like, I didn't actually think about Black Widow. I haven't gotten hit with one in a while. Oh, it I had can't. that, like, resurgence with uh, with Darkhawk for a while, eh? Yeah. Oh, without question. I, and uh, it's, it's a great card to put in Master Mold decks. Like, as these start to get more popular, it's, it is a very good card. A balanced bass black widow is is nutty. It's That's absolutely gross too, it's, yeah. it's absolutely nutty. Uh, you know, I think people are gonna be surprised we didn't say Cosmo, Shang Chi. Ah, I've gotten used to them. Yeah, they're 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 like they're, they're something you, a school bully can only pick on you so many times. So you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm I'm ready for it this time. You know. I feel like Shang Chi is definitely a necessary evil. Like it can be frustrating when I get hit with Shang Chi, but like I say it to my Twitch chat all the time. If I'm if I'm holding a nine or whatever power card just sitting in a lane with smiling like an idiot it's asking to get shang chi and that's why like i wouldn't turn six shang chi's all the time like what was this person thinking like why didn't this person think like this guy can't have shang chi right no of course i do of course i have shang chi in my list everyone has shang chi you can basically there's two things in marvel snap that are always true one they have shang chi two they drew all the cards they needed oh that's the way you approach every game like they drew every card they needed and they have shang chi 100 100 i i always i always you know i'll click intern and i'm like let's just pretend he doesn't exist when i end my turn like <laughs> like maybe maybe out there and uh, that's why obviously he is important so yeah those are like the top offenders if i were to pick one like it, it could be one we already talked about but pick one to end it as like your right now most hated card in marvel snap all right i do have one and this is kind of on me honestly like i'm giving this card some slack but like it doesn't deserve it because it actually is amazing and it's actually pretty high in the meta right now and that's titania i'm bringing up titania not because the card is bad but because if you don't zero this card oh my god what a nightmare like you're gonna misplay it like i don't care how good you are you could play Titania 100 times and you're misplaying her 70 times because the card is just built to tilt. It is going to bounce the wrong way. It's going to just, oh, this card. I, 
I have lost so many games misplaying Titania. Maybe it's a skill issue. I accept that, but Titania is a card that will tilt you out if you don't zero it's it. It's definitely one of those cards that, like, let's say you just stormed the the lane the uh, the turn before, and you're like, all right, do <laughs> I put Titania this. on this lane? And here's the thing. It doesn't matter. If you did, they play a card. If you did it, they played on some other location and they got that priority, right? Like, you're like, damn it. Either way, that's just how she feels. And it, she can't be very frustrating. Uh, I, I feel like I burnt all my cubes uh, testing her a few seasons back and I've gotten like really used to her. Uh, but I, dude, honestly, that's a good pick. I actually really enjoy that pick. Yeah. The more I thought she's about less it. Damaging on, she's less damaging on turn six. Like Titania turn six yeah, is less damaging. Really good there. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest. It's Iceman. Uh, yeah. Iceman's my most. Oh, just go back to Iceman again. Yep. yep. I told you it, it, it could be one that we already, I think Iceman for sure. Like there's not a card that like, it's like RNG just spins their little wheel. And every time it's like, oh, F cozy. Yeah. Let's do that one again. Every <laughs> time. Man, every time. So, uh, yeah, I, Iceman's got to be mine. No question. He's got to be my top of the oh, top. Man. Most hated right now. I, it's not like it's he, so like... It's so funny. I, you're actually getting worked up here. Like, I, I can see the anger in your eye. Like, you brought it up a second time. Here's the thing. I don't, like, want it to be nerfed or anything. I just, like, this is the card that, like, I'll be making a video, and I'll be like, all right, it's all come together. Here we go. I got something for a short, and it's just like, I'm like all right. Well, there's that. There's, yeah, you just throw that one away, you know? Uh, but, uh, yeah. What if Iceman wasn't able to hit five costs? Well, that would be honestly, then I, I that would I'd be so good. That's all of my issues. It's the Sarah. Does it kill the card though? Uh, I it, they won't ever do that. But yeah, it, it, does, it, it does. Yeah, I mean, kinda. It, it, You're kind of smiling. You're like, hey, okay, I don't mind like a, that. Kill Ice Man. That's dinner? fine. Yeah, I don't think they would do that just for like the text, right? But yeah, I, I, I it would hurt its viability because a lot of it, it comes off that. Like even Shuri, like it can mess that flow up but yeah five cost cards though are the ones to hit those are the ones that iceman definitely affects the most so uh that would be tough and of course we made a concerted effort not to bring up leech but okay but anyways <laughs> yeah <sure. laughs> get that off the screen get it off the screen i don't want to see that very now you're gonna haunt my dreams for the next week but anyways guys it was so much fun to have you guys join us this week as always as we said in the comment section let us know not only your most hated cards but also in the pinned comment, we're going to be asking, what day of the week would you like to see the Snapchat? Because Cozy and I were aggregating some data to make some choices around, you know, with the over-the-year updates and how we can best give you guys the content that we know you guys enjoy. So thank you so much for your support. Press the like button on either one of our videos. And, uh, you know, the comments and everything that you guys do to support our content does mean the world to us. Both Cozy and I really appreciate every single one of you. It does not kind of like go unappreciated or unacknowledged that every single view is a human being interacting with our content. So I want you to know that we appreciate you. And I got great news. And that is if you want to see more Marvel Snap content, right in the middle of the screen, we have Cozy Snap side of the Snapchat. I highly encourage that you check it out. We had fantastic conversations. And uh, Cozy, once again, thank you so much for joining me this week. I appreciate it. We got a good one next week, man. It's going to be a spicy, a spicy chop bowl snapchat absolutely and we'll see you on that next marvel snap episode